A couple of days ago, I put out a video called Give Them What They Want. That was the first part of a two-parter, and this is the second part. Give them what they want. It's a great piece of advice insofar as business. And I'll give you a very, very specific example. There's this great channel called Geeks and Gamers. It was started recently. I mean, it must have been like three, four months ago or something like that. And Geeks and Gamers is run by a great guy called Jeremy. He does terrific content. And as the name would imply, it's about things that are of interest to people who are geeky and into games. You know, movies, video games, that kind of stuff. And he was doing just content of different sorts and, and, you know, puttering along. And his goal, which he made very clear, was that he wanted to have a successful YouTube channel, a commercially successful YouTube channel, right? That was his goal. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with saying, I want to be commercially successful. Nothing wrong with it at all. And anybody who claims otherwise is just an idiot. Okay, geeks and gamers, they wanted to have, or he wanted to have, a commercially successful channel. And he was puttering along, and then he did like a, a video or two about Star Wars. Just as like in the normal course of events. You know, he would do some about video games, and some about this or that, the other. And he did a couple on Star Wars. And the ones on Star Wars really clicked with his audience. The ones on Star Wars got a disproportionate number of views, and all of a sudden, his channel started to explode because of the Star Wars videos that he was doing, right? So what did he do? He gave his audience what the audience wanted. He gave them more content about Star Wars. His channel became a 24-7 a operation insofar as Star Wars is concerned, right? It's Star Wars all day, every day, all the time. This guy got it. He gave his audience what they wanted and his audience ballooned. Right? Good on him. But here's a trap that you can easily fall into, and you have to be very, very careful. You see, sometimes you can fall into the trap of not just giving them what they want, but becoming their slave. Now, I'm gonna mention a couple of YouTube channels that have fallen into this trap of becoming a slave, a slave to their audience, okay? And this is a trap that happens not just in YouTube. I'm just going to be using YouTube because it's an easy example. I can point to it and you can look at it and see for yourself. But it happens in all walks of life where somebody is giving people what they want and then finds that they are unable to change course. They are stuck. They have to keep on giving people what they want. They become a slave to their audience, their audience, their client base, whomever, their bosses sometimes. They keep on giving them what they want, but they can only give them what they want. They can't get out of their box. And I'm thinking of a YouTube channel specifically. There's one, Thunderfoot. Thunderfoot has close to like a million subscribers, 800,000, something like that. I, I've lost track. Now, Thunderfoot is this scientist guy, and he started out with like these um, debunking Christianity videos, I think, or de debunking uh, believers in God, it doesn't matter. The point is, he, he started giving them this content and he's d decayed into this channel that basically says that, you know, solar roadways are balderdash and Arnica, Anita Sarkeesian is bad. That's all the content he's creating, basically. That's it. That's all that his audience will like him to show them. He's become a slave to his audience. You see what I mean? There's another one, Sargon of Akkad. I mean, I've had my run-ins with Sargon here and there. And uh, Sargon is a slave to his audience because all of his content is basically feminists are bad, SJWs are poopy heads. That's all he can do. If he tries to deviate from that, he's screwed. He'll lose his audience. And he's tried a couple of times, but he can't. He's a slave to his audience and he's so concerned about holding on to his audience that, you know, Basically, his audience has him in shackles. Now, if you're interested in just making a business out of YouTube, for instance, like in the case of Jeremy over at Games and uh, Geeks and Gamers. Sorry. Jeremy over at Geeks and Gamers, he just wants a successful YouTube channel, and if it means that he has to give them uh, Star Wars content 24-7, and, and that's the way to make it a successful business, he's gonna do it, Good on him that he doesn't really have shackles now, does he? He's doing what he wants. What he wants is a successful channel and therefore he's within his parameters of freedom, if you will. No, that's an awkward phrase. 
He is giving them what they want and thereby achieving his goals, his goals that were freely chosen by him. So he's not a slave to his audience, right? But these other channels, Thunderfoot and Sargon and, and uh, TJ Kirk, the amazing, the amazing atheist, he has the same problem. He's got like a million subs and his million subs, you know, they don't like his new content, but he doesn't know how to go back to making the old content. He's sort of like in a very real sense, he's forgotten how to make the old content. So he's constantly trying to give his audience what they want, but he's failing, right? <laughs> Now, why am I bringing this up specifically? Well, because something really interesting happened to me. Uh, over the last couple of days, I've gotten this huge influx of new viewers and new subscribers. All of a sudden, the YouTube algorithm has, has, has blessed me with a huge audience, putting me in front of a whole bunch of people that they never had before, right? And so, you know, I was thinking to myself about this situation because it all happened on this video called um, Never Date a Woman Older Than 25, right? And because of that video, which has gotten tens of thousands of views, I've gotten thousands of new subscribers, which is great. But it made me think, what do I want? Do I want to be making a channel where I, you know, tell guys how to get girls and, and you know, girl advice, if you will? Is that the channel I'm doing? Well, no, because see, I was never interested in building a large channel. I'm interested in leaving a registry of ideas, thoughts, concepts for my kid. That's always been the driving motivator that I've had. See, my goal is to make videos so that when my son, who's currently three years old and I'm 50, right? So when my son is 30 and I'm likely dead, he'll be able to look at these videos and get some life lessons, life lessons that will serve him, life lessons that I would have given him in person were he old enough to understand them. But right now, he's three, he's far too young, of course, and I'm 50, and so it's unlikely that I live to be 80. So it's smart for me to be doing these videos. That's the goal of these videos. I'm not interested in a big audience. I'm not interested in sucking up to my audience. I'm not a slave to my audience, in other words. I just want to make good content that my kid in 30 years will be able to look at and learn something from. You see what I mean? And so, you know, for a second, I was tempted, oh man, you know, with all this big influx of subscribers, maybe I should do another video, you know, uh, never date women older than 24, you know? Hey, you know, if it worked for, you know, 25, maybe for 24, it'll be, you know, just as many views. Of course, I didn't do that. It would be foolish. I'd become a slave to my audience. I'd be chasing my audience. I'd be chasing my clients, and that's not my goal, see? But it made me think about this problem, and it is a classic problem that all business people have, by the way. All business people have, at one time or another, fallen into the trap of chasing their customer base, of chasing their audience. Deciding when you should chase your client base and when you should not is almost an art form. Because sometimes, in the short run, it's really good to chase your audience, give them what they want, be their slave, right? Sometimes it's very beneficial, like Jeremy over at Geeks and Gamers. I'm mentioning Jeremy in this video, and I mean no disrespect towards man. I admire him greatly, and I admire how he's conducting himself and his business. It's the way you should conduct your business. He saw that his audience likes Star Wars content. He is giving them Star Wars content. He is growing his channel. Now, if he's smart, and I know that he is, although I've never spoken with a man, but I know that he's very smart, and I know that what he's going to be doing in a few months' time, when the Star Wars thing has, you know, petered out someone, gets a little tedious for all involved, including his audience, he'll, you know, start to pivot away to other material. He's a smart customer. He'll do that, right? But the point I'm trying to make, see, is that it is normal for you at some point in your career, in your business, to be chasing your client base, chasing your audience, you know, being in a very real sense, you know, their slave, giving them what they want, right? But then when things are plateauing, when things are steady, when you're just, just going forward very level, right? That is when you have to start thinking to yourself, am I a slave to my customer base? Or should I change? And if I do change, how should I change and why am I changing? Okay? Because everybody reaches a plateau. It's perfectly normal. In every business, there's a period of growth and then you plateau. 
Now, when you plateau, it depends where you plateau. If you plateau at a level that you're really happy with, then stay there. You don't need to change. You don't need to do anything. Just stay there and be happy. You know, enjoy life, right? That is actually the goal of every businessman. The goal is to reach a plateau where you're perfectly happy. You feel that like you're going on, on all cylinders and perhaps you're not growing, but you're just happy with everything. And so, yeah, perfectly fine. That, that's, that's something to aspire to of reaching a plateau of satisfaction. But if you're growing and you reach a plateau, but you're not satisfied, okay? You're not satisfied with where you are and you want to change. Well, then you got to think it through and decide how you want to change. Do you want to have more clients, more money or bigger audience or, you know, just grow? Or do you want to change for a different reason? See, like in my case, as I've explained to you, my motivation for this channel, the idea of me growing is a lot of fun and very exciting, but it's not my primary driver. You see, I, I, I want to grow, but I don't care if I don't because the purpose of these videos is completely different from simply having a YouTube business. If I wind up having, you know, just a hundred subscribers and I do all of the videos that I want to do, I'll be perfectly happy because there will come a time when I won't make any more videos. Okay. Uh, that time is in the distance, but there will come such a time when I feel that I'm repeating myself, then I'll stop because then, you know, what's the fun in that? I'm just, you know, hearing an old guy, an old fart repeating himself. What the fuck? Right. But the point I'm trying to make, see, uh, you have to know what you are going for. What is your aim? If your aim is to make money, okay, and you've reached a plateau and you want to make more, that's perfectly fine. If you've reached a plateau and you want to change because you feel dissatisfied, well, then it gets really tricky. Then it becomes very, very dangerous because if you change for your own satisfaction because you want to do more interesting work or work that satisfies you somehow, then you have to be, you know, you have to put on the big boy pants and decide, am I willing to take the financial hit in order to do so? In my own case before, as a young writer, I reached a plateau of making a great deal of money writing thrillers, uh, novels. I was very unhappy, incredibly unhappy. And I decided that it was worth my while to take a risk and stop writing those books because they just made me miserable. I was good at it, but very unhappy. And I didn't want to be a slave. You see now these other guys who decide that they're going to keep on putting out the same content, the same material in order to maintain themselves. And so far as their income, they're slaves, they're slaves. And I personally never wanted to be that hmm? some men, make up their minds that they have to be slaves and they decide consciously that they are going to suck it up and deliver what their customers want, whether they like it or not, because they have responsibilities. Now that choice is perfectly admirable and respectable. Okay. Because they are willing to sacrifice themselves in order to make the money because they have other priorities. Maybe they have to take care of people in their lives, their wives, their children, what have you. Maybe they have some illness that they need the money. It doesn't really matter why they need the money. They decide that for their own responsibilities and for the sake of uh, providing for the people that they love, they are going to be somebody else's slave, be it a boss, be it a customer base, be it whomever. Right. And that's perfectly respectable. And you should never look down on such a man who makes such a decision. Okay. Because such a man is, is sacrificing his life for the sake of providing for others. That's heroic. If you think about it, right? But I'm not talking about such men. I'm talking about men who decide that they could change, but they're afraid. Now that, that is not heroic. That's sad. See, when you have the ability to change, when you have the ability to grow, grow in whatever way, not necessarily numerically in so far as customer base and money, but perhaps grow as a man, then you have to take that chance. You have to take that risk. See, and life is too short to spend it as a slave. It's perfectly respectable if you decide to become a slave for the sake of other people. But if you decide to be a slave because you're afraid of freedom, now that's different. That's very different. And that's very wrong. 
no matter how you look at it. If you decide that you're going to settle for this life of slavery with shackles on your ankles, rowing the boat, as the slave master tells you to, i.e. your audience, your customer base, your clients, your whomever, right? If you're going to row that boat at the beat of the slave master's drum because you're afraid of what might happen, if you stand up, take off your shackles and just go off into the distance, well then who do you have to blame? You have nobody to blame but yourself. So make up your mind like a man. Decide what you want. What are your priorities? What you want to do with your life? Don't simply become a slave because, oh, you know, I just get paid so much money, so even though I hate it, I'm going to keep on doing it. No, 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 no. Don't be like that. Follow what makes you happy because, like I always tell you guys, the days are long, but the decades are short. They get behind you in the blink of an eye, and all of a sudden, you'll find yourself with your life over.